Welcome to Weekday Somatics. Happy New Year. Um, thank you for all the 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 to, to those of you who who shared your your experiences and and comments in uh, in the messenger group that it very very it was very nice to read all that this morning. I'm very happy to uh, to hear these. <laughs> I'm very happy to hear these really wonderful reports. Um, of the of these experiences that you're having, so that's very nice. What's what I what I find so uh, I don't have a good word for it. What I really like about about that is that. that you have a, you have a, it's like when you, once you get your, your foot in the door, which you're, is what a lot of you are describing, you, you, you have a way, you have a cl clarity of a direction and you have growing confidence in that direction because it works. And how, how many things can you say that about? Not that many. So that's, that's really nice. So I have something in mind for today. I, I think it, We'll start out the new year with a uh, exploration of being able to, to perceive tissue states and being able to then direct our intention to transform armored tissue states into A, a release, a softening, surrender. We could just call it a natural state, a neutral state, open, yielding, receptive. So, I'm in order to do this. Uh, I, I, there's not not in order to in order to do what I have in mind. We're going to explore on the face. Uh, so I'm going to, and, and specifically the ears. So I'm going to take the headphones off. I'll do my best to keep my eyes open so that I can keep an eye on the chat in case anybody has any comments as we're doing this. So let's find a posture that we can inhabit for the next 30 minutes or so. If you can do it seated upright, then I encourage you to explore that, but remember, I had I had a a, th a thought. I thought it was funny. Uh, so you might know the ex expression "no pain, no gain." Okay, this is no pain is gain. The possibility of no pain. It's real. So the, the gain is no pain. So if you're pushing into pain, don't do that. Because that's, that's going in the wrong direction. The right direction is 
to discover where no pain is. No pain is not something that we have to work hard to acquire or earn. No pain is the natural state. No pain is already here. No pain is underneath all of our striving and efforting and trying and grasping, all of the adjusting, all of the trying to figure it out, all of the attempts to get the right answer, to earn it, to deserve it, all of that. That's the, the pain is in all of the trying. No pain is effortlessly already here. Many of you are having tastes of that. You recognize that from your own experience. And so now it's just a, a game of continuing to trust in that and explore in that direction. So we're, we're, as I often say, we're setting ourselves up for success by exploring the edge where we're, we're not seeking comfort. So we're not, that's the wrong direction. The wrong direction is seeking for comfort, trying to get more comfort. That would be um, operating from the, the wrong assumption, which is that my pain is innate and I need to do something to fix it. So we're not seeking for comfort. Instead, we're trusting in the support that's already here. So we're starting from a posture that we believe that we can likely inhabit without strain and that we can begin to really deeply trust over the next 30 minutes. be really honest if you're straining then ease up and if you need to now or at any point if you really genuinely need to because you realize that you've pushed too hard if you need to adjust and give yourself a different posture that's okay but also don't seek for comfort. So it's going to be, your, your brain will tell you, if you're, if you're doing this correctly, correctly in air quotes, if you're doing it correctly, your brain's going to complain to you. That's good. Your brain is going to have objections. That's good. We're wanting to see the objections. So if we're seeking for comfort, we're, we're overlooking the objections. If we're willing to inhabit this posture and commit, commit to stillness, commit to being present fully to this experience, fully present to every objection, every image, every thought, every idea, everything that comes that we have habitually avoided, resisted, denied, rejected. The, the game, the exploration is be present to it. How do you be present to it? Just commit to stillness. That's it. When you're committed to stillness, then you're, you're present to the experience, whatever it is, as it is, because you're committed to this stillness. Notice, this is a key point, and I, and I hope you're, I hope it's clear, but I'll just say it anyway. We're, we're in the inquiry. It's happening now. So here we are, we're in this posture, we're committed, 
and we're committed to stillness. So just be still. Now, how do you be still? I'm saying the same thing in many different ways. So if it sounds like I'm saying the same thing, it's because I'm saying the same thing. How do we commit to stillness? We observe every impulse and we don't indulge. So necessarily, hopefully this is clear, we are present to the experience because we're observing carefully yet openly. So it's not tense, it's open, soft, relaxed, still, soft. We're observing in this very gentle way, effortlessly, just observing every impulse. And allowing the impulses to unwind. So notice what I look to your own experience now and see how what I'm saying points to something in your experience. Every impulse You can observe your habit. Your habit is this impulse begins to come into awareness and you react. You react in all of these ways, grasping, looking away, flinching, squeezing, thinking, all of the different strategies, but they're all fundamentally trying to do something with the impulse. So you can see how you get tangled in the reaction to the impulse. Here, what we're doing is we're just observing all of that at a subtle level. So before before we get carried away, we just observe at the subtle level and we allow it to unwind so that the impulse, it's like, this is, this is just a description. It's, it's pointing to something. It's not, don't take it too literally, but it's like the, as if this impulse is arising and before it even takes shape, before there's even any definition to it, we just allow it in our awareness, just allow it to diffuse, to dissolve. See how different that is than the habit. The habit is to do something, to grasp it, to armor, to separate. But here we're softening. So we're observing every impulse and we're softening. So in the physical realm, we can be aware of sensation and the stories that are habitually attached to the sensation. Many of you are reporting your excellent observations of this. So I'm really happy about that. So you you can notice that the sensation has the, the, you out of habit associate a story with the sensation. The story tells you, it, it, it comes to a false conclusion. It says, the sensation means something. The sensation exists in a location and it means something, it means something to me. What does it mean to me? Well, chances are 
since we're sitting here in stillness, the sensations that are arising, most likely the association that you have is that that sensation means something bad to you. It means something troublesome, something threatening, something harmful, something injurious. It's going to break you. It's going to squeeze you. It's going to pinch you. It's going to do something bad to you. And this is why it's really important that we set ourselves up for success on the edge so that if we're, if we're pushing too hard, if we've put ourselves into a posture that we're not ready to inhabit, then we're not, we're going to have a really hard time with this. Really, really, really hard. So be gentle. If you're being gentle and you're being really honest and you're allowing yourself to inhabit this posture in stillness, then you can recognize what I'm pointing to. You can start to see how all of these sensations do not have the meaning that you think they do. You can prove this to yourself because you have this power. And I've, I used the word inhibition the other day and some, I think some, there was some objection to that. So if you have an objection to that, then just overlook the word, forget about the word because it's just, your objection is only based on your idea. So just see what this is pointing to. You have a power of inhibition. You have a power of softening. You have a power of non-indulgence. You have a power of non-attachment. This power that I'm talking about, it's as far as I can tell, I mean, I don't think that I'm the only, that I don't think I'm an expert. I'm, I'm pointing to things that I have observed and that I'm certain that you can observe. But this power, I, I find it's the only power that I have. It's innate to my nature. The other powers that I thought I had, the grasping, armoring, protecting, figuring out, solving, fixing, all of those powers, those are false powers. I can know that they're false powers because I've never succeeded, never. Now you have to look for yourself and see that honestly for yourself. But what, the only power that I find that's authentic, a true and innate power, is this power that I'm describing as inhibition or non-attachment or softening, non-resistance, non-violence, non-suddenness. And it's, it's innate, and I can recognize that it's innate because it's, I, do, I do not have to do anything for it. I don't have to make any effort whatsoever. I don't have to invent it or imagine it. It's present. It's present when I simply, when I am present, as I'm describing here, as I'm pointing to here. So we can choose to recognize this power and to just remain with this power. So this power is, as the impulse arises, just simply do nothing, just be present, observant, aware, aware of the reactivity and aware that that reactivity is not you. And the thing that you've imagined that you need to defend is also not you. If your true 
truly, if you truly set yourself up here, in a gentle way, in a way that's on the edge, that's not seeking comfort, but it's not pushing or straining, then all you have to do is trust in that. The, the worries will arise. I'm going to break. I can't do it. And then you can tell the truth. Did I set myself up wrong? Am I straining? Am I avoiding? Can I soften? Can I remain true to this recognition of stillness that's present, that's real, that's, that's a real experience? It's not a fantasy, it's not imagination, it's not just some idea, it's true. I can know it's true because it's here when all imagination is gone. If I'm not indulging imagination, this is what remains. So we can use so many tools to help ourselves to clarify this discovery. And we explore those in these meetings. Today we'll explore what I, what, what I set out to uh, describing, which is that we'll begin to sensitize ourselves to tissue states through touch. So if it's comfortable for you, and now I should say, if you always do what's appropriate for you, so don't, this may be enough just to just remain still. So it's the most advanced practice that I know. So don't, don't think that you have to do more or that more is gonna be better necessarily. But if it's appropriate for you and only you can know that, then let's bring our hands to the ears. And uh, if you're like me, if, you, if your ear is shaped like mine, which I imagine yours is close enough because we're all, we're all human, uh, you'll be able to grasp. Now, for some of you, this may be, you may think this is uncomfortable. Uh, this is weird. I don't know. But uh, if you think this is weird, I got a lot of weird stuff in store. But uh, you stick your index finger inside the, let me turn to the side so you can see, inside the ear on the, the bottom so that there's, a, there's some cartilage there and you can feel that cartilage and you can bring the thumb behind the ear so that it's like you're gently pinching that part of the ear with the index and the thumb. And we can do that on both sides and you can allow the arms to come to a restful position. It's like, it's like your, your hands are like giant, your, your hands and arms become like giant clip on earrings, but inside the ear instead of on the earlobe. And see if you can let them hang. So you're not pulling, you're not using, exerting muscular effort to pull down, but to the, whatever degree is possible and appropriate for you, you can allow the natural weight of the hands and arms to provide a little bit of feedback here. So maybe this is enough. Maybe this is too much. Only you can know. But 
with this feedback, now we can do all these wonderful things. Well, first of all, just notice what you're sensing under the fingertips. So I, I said that there's some cartilage there, but what do you sense? Are you clear on what you're feeling there? Does it feel vague and lumpy or does it feel really clear? Can you really clearly sense what's what? Can you sense what's the ear and what's the skull? Can you sense what's the jaw? Can you sense what's the neck? And in some sense, those are false distinctions, but on the other hand, they're useful because there are non-false distinctions there too, because there really is cartilage and there really is a jawbone and there really is a skull and there really are vertebrae in the neck and they are, as far as it goes, they are distinct. So can we get clear on that? And continuing to keep the hands and arms and, well, and the ears <laughs> where they are in space, let's explore moving the skull, not the jaw, but the skull. Oh, so let's keep the jaw where it is too. And you can kind of let the, uh, the, the fists gently uh, rest against the jawbone so that you can be aware of where the jaw is in space. And let's let the jaw remain there and the ears remain where they are. And then we're gonna move the skull. We're gonna move the skull by kind of tipping it up a little bit. And then back to neutral, slowly. So the, the mouth will open. Let's do that a, a few times at our own pace. So we're going to be opening and closing the mouth by just moving the skull, leaving the jaw and the ears and the arms and the shoulders where they are. And so as you're doing that, I'm going to say a few things about this that maybe will be helpful to you. So keep exploring that movement. And maybe you can notice that you can allow the thumbs. So the thumbs are behind the and underneath the ear, if that makes sense. But you can also notice that you can allow the, the thumbs to kind of start to rest on the back of the jawbone at the same time. So it, as the pads of the finger of the thumbs are still underneath the ear, pinching loosely, gently, the ear, they can also, the sides of the thumbs can come to rest on the back of the jawbone. So maybe you can start to get clearer on the jawbone. And really sense the, the feeling that you're getting under the fingers. So there's an incredible amount of opportunity here. You, sh you should, should's a loaded word, but you should be able to feel the, the, the soft tissue softening as you're doing this. So notice that also inwardly, you can perceive what you feel and you can direct your intention to soften, to release so that the jaw becomes softer and the ears become softer and the neck becomes softer and the throat becomes softer, the tongue becomes softer. And as you do this, maybe you even start to notice that you have a, a desire to yawn. Well, don't purposefully indulge a, a, an exaggerated yawn, but do allow a release as if yawning, so that the throat releases and opens. And continue to allow that 
release in the throat as if you if it was a continuous yawn. So as you open, allow the yawning sensation and as you're closing, continue to maintain the yawning sensation. And then slowly bring the arms down. Let them just slide down the front of the body. And we'll take a few moments here to see that we can continue to allow that same spaciousness and softness and clarity without doing anything to disturb it. So the habit will be most likely to do something, to come back to the normal state, the habitual state But if we allow ourselves just to continue to rest in that openness that we've explored, so the throat will be softer, the ears will be softer, the neck will be softer, the shoulders very likely will be softer. You will have a different sense of yourself. Your idea of yourself, especially your idea of your physical body will be different. You might have a sense of yourself being longer. The position of your head may be different relative to your torso. Just continue to remain aware of that and notice any impulses to try and correct or get back to a normal habitual state. If we just allow ourselves to rest in this new open, unfamiliar state, then something happens so that we no longer believe the old way. The old habits cease to have a false sense of reality to them. We no longer identify as them as strongly at least. So our habit of pulling the head forward, clenching the jaw, pulling the ears tight, those habits can soften and we cease to identify as the state produced by those actions. Continue to explore that and remain still and restful. Just allow for that, that change to integrate. And at your own pace, I'll invite you and all of us to begin to explore transitioning from the formal inquiry 
and see that we can do so without disturbing anything. So that even as we begin to perhaps open the eyes if they've been closed, or if we begin to move the body, we can remain aware of this stillness that's not dependent upon anything. It's not dependent on any conditions. So we, we create conditions for the inquiry that allow us to recognize this stillness more clearly. But the stillness is not dependent on those conditions. And the transition from the formal inquiry is important from my perspective because otherwise we'll likely fall into the wrong belief that we need to do the inquiry in order to have the experience of stillness. So the transition helps to clarify, if we do it consciously, it helps to clarify that the stillness is primary. The experience arises from that stillness and the stillness is constant. We can really recognize that we can all of us can begin to recognize that more and more even during the waking state we can just notice that that stillness is present that all that is happening is happening in that stillness that our our primary sense of ourselves is anchored in that stillness So for those who are here live, we'll stay on for the Q&A. And for anybody who's watching the recording, I'm going to end it now. So thank you for joining. Happy New Year to you.